turning point of folks stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you have the time of your life. It's the time of your life with the chill stream on Wednesday. I'm Jake Johnson, your host. You're watching Untethered Live, and this is Chill Stream Wednesday. How are you doing this fine, fine evening? I'm doing fantastic. I can barely talk, but that's okay. That's never stopped me before. <coughs> I've been riding my motorcycle a lot in the rain, so I'm kind of... <coughs> I got a Kermit the Frog in my throat. I feel like Miss Piggy. Great Scott says, I'm chilling. I'm chilling too, buddy. How are you? It is a beautiful rainy day here in North Carolina. As you can see, I've got the uh, only dry spot of land in the whole state. Diego, what's happening, brother? Great to be here on a Wednesday. Yes, it is. Is that annoying? I had some dust on my microphone cover and I didn't want to suck it down my throat. Oh, man, it's been a long day. I worked right up until time to do the podcast. I got home just in time. Long day. But I got something a little different for us in store tonight. I'm going to read an article, and then we're going to discuss. So, when uh, April and uh, Kev gets here, Diego, I want you to set us up. You set it up, and I'll knock it down. In case you're wondering what I mean by that, explain to everyone when they get here what this article is about, why it was written, and the thing that it's uh, addressing, and then I will address it with the article. Live, right here, just for you. I just ate with my parents some delicious Greek food. Yummy. Hmm. Well, I had Mexican today. Well, I stopped at a Mexican truck and uh, ordered a chicken sandwich, and it was about that big. I couldn't finish it, and it had guacamole and all kinds of stuff on it. It was delicious. You ate a Greek once. She was lovely. There's Kev. Oh, it's April. Her phone died. Okay. Is Kev with you? You know you should charge those things. They got a little port on the bottom of them right here. See that little hole? You plug that into the wall, see, and then it keeps it from dying. He's at the jail. I knew he'd get there eventually. They came for him, I can tell. What does a bowl of jello and a redhead have in common? Hmm. I have no idea. They both jiggle when you blow on them. <laughs> I don't think the resident redhead will think that's too funny. Oh, she thinks it's too funny. How about that? Exact terminology. Good to see you too, April or Kevin or whoever I'm speaking to. You never can tell. Could be one of those incognito type things. Pretending to be one like a wolf in sheep's clothing.
All right, Diego. Tell us what it's all about. Lay me up. I know who it is. Me. Diego has been after me for a solid three weeks to get on this article concerning this particular book. And we're going to do that tonight. You're not a wolf. I'm like the straight, oh, like the straight guy who acts gay to hang, hang out with chicks. Yeah, those are called white knights. And anytime you meet a male feminist, you can start the clock on a rape charge. Believe that. Any man that calls himself a feminist is just around a corner. Sooner or later, you're going to catch him in somebody's sheets. Because that's what he's doing. He's not a feminist. He's not an ally. He's not your buddy. A man can't be friends with a woman. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Whomever you are that I'm speaking to. You're wrong. Can't happen. Right on, Jake. That's a fact. Jack, I know because I'm a man and I'm honest enough to tell you what I'm thinking about. And I can promise you that of all the girls I've ever been friends with, I wanted to sleep with all of them. And they knew it. There's just not a thing. I, I don't understand these men that will hold your hair while you're crying and buy it as time and just wait patiently. Wait till you're too drunk to resist. Oh, yeah, I know the type. I went to college with a few of them. What's the strangest name in your family? Well, mine, obviously. Second in line would be my uncle's. Third in line would be my father's. I guess Hubert's not a strange name. It's just not a normal name that you hear every day. But Wenzel is most definitely a strange name. And Wilder is most definitely a strange name. Orbis Oliver. Yeah, we're related, remember? <laughs> I had an Irby Lee. We named the cat Hubert. That's terrible. That was my dad's name, my father. Hubert Larry Johnson. Thomas Hubert Edward Cat. Thick. The cat. I got it. I was thinking you were going to do something clever with that name. Herbert. And I always figured that when I got old, I would start going by the name J.W. Wear overalls and chew tobacco. Diego, where'd you go? My mother's humor. I remember your mother's humor. We spent many and many a day sitting out there on that swing and swing just talking away. Pop's brother is J.W. Yep. I guess I'll wait for Diego to get back. He popped in and then he left. 
or he's ignoring me. It figures. I'd do a podcast just for him and he wouldn't even be here. Joseph Watson, which is a great moniker. Yeah. I like the name Joseph Watson. I don't like the name J.W. Just sounds like an old fat guy wearing coveralls and chewing tobacco. You gonna make it up them steps, J.W.? I'm coming. There he is. Kevin's not with us. That's April. I was just driving, guys. I got you. All right. Are you in a place where you can talk? We need an introduction to this book that you've been hounding me about. I'm going to read the article right here on the stream just for you. But I need a setup. I need to know what it is I'm arguing against. J.W. is a bouncer at the American Legion in Wrightsville. I'll be on soon after my phone gets charged to do so. Well, you're on right now. I know who you are. Just throw out a couple of emojis every now and then so I can spot you in the crowd. Has like 12 or 14 kids. Wow. He's been busy, hasn't he? He told his wife, Geez, hon, I was just poking fun at you. You didn't have to take me seriously. <coughs> Can you see that? I want you to know what kind of extreme pain I'm in, but you can't see it. But that whole joint is swollen all the way up to here. It's hard to see on the computer. That's kind of, uh, anyway. Arthritis. No joke, six ex-wives and most live there. It took like a trailer park. I'm high-fiving you. Anyway, I've been dealing with this thing for about three days now, and it just throbs like a hot poker in my bones. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play any guitar tonight or not, but I might I might try it. Kind of worse for wear, rode hard and put up wet, you know what I'm saying? You know about the arthritis? My buddy thinks it's gout, but I've never heard of anybody getting gout in their hand before. Stop touching the fans, Jake. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think they have to worry about that. Anyway, I don't think it's gout. I think it's arthritis. Usually feet, but it's possible. Well, I suppose it's possible. Anything's possible, but it's not a normal thing. And plus, I don't eat a lot of shellfish and a lot of pork and stuff like that. So, I don't think it's gout. I don't have the makeup for gout. I'm not a glutton. I don't shove shellfish in my face. You know, gout's called the king's disease because people would eat so much, it would make them get gout. And people who usually eat a lot, those are the ones who get gout. I don't eat very much. Only one wrist, right?
anyway, I'm pretty sure it's osteoarthritis. And uh, it comes and goes usually when I stress it. And I did move a bunch of equipment about a week ago. A couple of riding mowers and a, a motorcycle I loaded on and off of a trailer in the rain. So I did stress it. So it's probably why it's bothering me so bad. Kevin's got gout. It's because he eats a lot of shellfish. Oh, and he drinks a lot of beer, too. Beer is another thing that'll cause gout to inflame. Great news. An atheist in Kenya has converted from atheism to Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, get back to what I told you to do. You set me up for this book that you've been telling me about. We don't care about no atheist in Africa. We want to know about this guy that Mark David Hall rebuts because we're going to read his article right in here, right now, but you got to set it up for me. Praise be to God. That's right. Most likely a bruise, sprain, strain, sprain, or alien pod prepared to invade. It could be an alien pod, but I think it's arthritis. This is a recurring issue. It's not like it only happened once. It happens often, usually when I play a lot or when I move heavy things. It acts up, but it's uh, right there, right in the crook of my thumb, right that last joint on your thumb. It's like somebody sticking a hot poker right in there. It's very uncomfortable, and it just throbs. I might try that bee sting therapy. I hear that's really good for arthritis. Of course, you got to get stung by a bee, and that sucks, but it's supposed to work wonders. I'm willing to give it a shot. It's not carpal tunnel. I do have carpal tunnel, and my hands go numb, but that's not what that is. Now, of course, I've got carpal tunnel. I'm a guitar player. My whole life, I've spent using my hands... Probably the wrong way without warming up. I just left the jail. Do you want to meet me somewhere for dinner? I feel like there's two people talking on one device or one account. Just go get honey. You'll be treated a lot. <laughs> Yeah, if I don't wear a bee suit, right? Hold on, I'm coming. Yeah, I, I figured. Two people want to count. But this whole thing is all part of getting old, I reckon. Getting old ain't for sissies, is what my mama used to say. Diego. I'm waiting. I would like to get to reading this article, but I need you to set me up, brother. Are you still driving? Well, folks, we are at Diego's mercy. Whenever he feels like coming in, he'll come in and say what he needs to say about this book, and then I'll knock it down. See, I haven't read the book. I don't even know what the book's name is. But I do know that the man has a problem with it, and we're going to discuss it. Best laid plans and all. Can't win for losing.
I could just go rub some gasoline on it and then set that joker on fire. I bet it'll stop hurting then. <laughs> I sent you blood money for laughs and gas money to get your blood money. Ah, well, it's not blood money. I don't want it if you think that. It's supposed to be, you know, what do you call it? Tuition. It's not tithing. It's more like friendly support. You believe in something, you back it up. That's how it works. I certainly don't require it. You'll understand when you see the card. Gotcha. Patronage. There you go. That's a good word. I like tuition. It's more like that. What I, what I offer, I offer for free, but I will gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today, if you know what I'm saying. I reckon I'm just going to start reading the damn thing without him. <laughs> Try to do something nice and he disappears. It's a pretty lengthy article, too. It's not too bad, but, you know, a couple pages. It's got some prescient information in it, though. We should do Mad Libs one night. I have no idea what that is. I've heard it before. I've heard the word, but I don't know what they're talking about. I'm assuming it's some kind of trivia game. I've heard people in bars use that word, but I've never seen anybody do it, and I don't know what the hell they're talking about. But I'm game. I mean, I'm a pretty smart fella. You get me on the right subject, and you'll play hell trying to beat me on trivia. I used to play Jeopardy for fun. when I was in college. In fact, you might remember that. I did it a few times while you were around. I had the game. I love trivia. I love some trivia. Depends on the subject. I don't love bingo. Not much of a gambler. I like to win, but that losing thing sucks. You know what I forgot to do? Well, I didn't forget. I didn't have time. I didn't have time to make any coffee tonight. I'm missing it. Look it up. It's a story. But adjectives and nouns are chosen by folks without knowing the story. Oh, so it's like uh, I say one sentence and you say another sentence and they say another sentence and then it builds a story, but with different different rules, obviously. But it's like that game. <laughs> well, that's retarded. <coughs> I'll give it a shot. Go make you coffee. Have time. Nah. I'm already live. Can't get up and leave now unless I got to pee. And then I got to make that quick. I don't like doing that. 
because it looks bad. It's unprofessional. And I'm anything but unprofessional. I got you. So you write it ahead of time and then make a story out of it. I see. So it's like picking words. And then based on the words you pick, you make a story out of it. Gotcha. Well, you could use anything for that. You could use web pages. Every fifth word, you know. Well, we are waiting on Diego. I don't know what he's doing. He was driving, so he might be in a store or something. It's Mad Libs, baby. I'll look into it. I'm game to do anything you guys are game to do. I, I want this to be fun for everybody. So, you know, I'll read an article for Diego. I'll play Mad Libs with you. Whatever April wants, I'll do that. This is an interactive television show. It's yours. You do with it as you please. You're the one paying for it. I'm just the host of said television show. That means I'm your employee. I'm just a dancing chicken. Turn the heat up and watch me go. I like it that way. Tell a funny joke. Two Jews walked into a bar. The other one ducked. I think that's pretty funny. This kid... Uh, he's failing in school. He's, you know, punk. He's got real long hair and tattoos and smokes dope. And he's doing real bad in school. And his dad's had it up to here. And his dad said, son, you're getting about that age now. You're about 16. So I've been thinking about buying you a car. And the kid said, all right, dad. He said, but there's, there's ground rules. I'll buy you the car. But you're going to have to make straight A's this year. And you're going to have to get a haircut and stop smoking pot. Kid goes, all right, Dad. So the kid really buckles down. I mean, he wants the car. So he buckles down and, and he curbs the smoking pot. And he, he eases off of that. And he starts buckling down on school. And he's making good grades. And he comes back a year later and he says, uh, Dad, I'm making good grades now and I've quit smoking pot, but I just cannot bring myself to cut my hair. I'm a long hair. He said, well, you know, that's that's the deal, son. You got to cut your hair. He says, well, Dad, you believe in God, don't you? Dad says, yeah. He says, well, if you read the Bible, you'll find out that Jesus Christ himself had long hair. And the dad said, yeah, if you read a little bit further, you'll find out he walked every damn where he went to. But um, ban hammer. Who's needing the ban hammer? You like that joke? That's one of my favorite Jesus jokes. Who needs the ban hammer? Great sky. Or are you just saying Banhammer to be funny? I cannot say why. Okay. Do 
Did you ban someone? A ban hammer is when someone shows their butt. You see that wrench beside Great Sky Troll's name? That means that he's a moderator for this channel. And he and I have the right and the privilege to ban people from the channel. And we call that the ban hammer. And you get it when you show your ass too much. The first joke was edgy. <laughs> well, it was... Uh, it had an edge for sure. And those wrenches are precious. Don't just give them out to anybody. Only people you trust. Because with that, he has certain access to my channel. And I wouldn't just give that to anybody because they could mess around, change things or whatever. I don't know how much access he has, but I know he's got some. I did know when I gave it to him, but I've forgotten now. You didn't understand the first joke? Two Jews walked into a bar, the other one ducked. You see, there's three Jews in a bar. Two of them bang into the bar and the other one ducks. It's called logic. Okay, well, let us know, Diego, when you get done driving so that you can give us your attention because I've got something for you and I can't do it until you're ready. Yeah, it's not for censoring speech at all. That's not what the ban hammer's for. I don't believe in censoring speech. I only want you to ban people if they're bots or if they're causing trouble in the group. Namely, people that are trying to derail what's being talked about, and namely during Bible study. I don't really care on Chillstream because anything goes. But when there's a pointed subject, and we're talking about this thing, everybody's mind needs to be on that thing and not all over the place. I had to buy some stuff at the store. See, I told you he was in the store. But I'm back. All right. <clears throat> All right, Diego. This book that you've been on my ass about to read, or I mean this article, I'm going to read tonight. But I need you to set the book up that the article is refuting. Set it up. Let us know who the guy is that wrote the book, what he's all about, and what this article is about, and then I'll get into it. I'm not a triggered schoolgirl, me neither. I'm hip. I'm not a triggered schoolgirl. I can take it. Me too, usually. Unless they're like that one guy that I banned, or two people that I banned. I banned them because they wouldn't shut up about things that were wrong, number one. You can say anything you want. You can believe anything you want. I don't have to listen to it. Especially when I'm teaching the exact opposite of what you're saying. Okay, my phone's still on charge, but I'll be tuning in soon. I'm locking up the office and leaving now. So if I'm silent for a few, we get it. We understand. Don't worry. I'll be back shortly. Can I get an amen? The name of the book is The Founding Myth by Andrew Seidel. And he is an attorney for the Freedom from Religion Foundation. 
He is an attorney like our friend Kevin. Well, not exactly. Our friend Kevin believes in God. I get booted off channels for having troll in my name. Well, you won't get booted off of this one. You have control of this one. I bequeath you my power. Use it wisely. Now I wish I had that echo back. All right. <coughs> and don't try banning me. I don't think it'll work. That would suck, wouldn't it? Get banned from my own damn channel. The difference is Kevin believes in God, see? This guy rejects him and ridicules God's children and bullies them in the most disgusting way. Well, we're going to have fun tearing his ass apart tonight, Diego. I'm going to read the article, and we're going to discuss it as we go. Any points that anybody has, bring up, bring them up. Say what you think. It's uh, every man for himself. I'm loving it. Where's my thing? Why isn't it there? There it is. Let me see if I can rearrange this where I can see the chat and read also. There we go. Hmm. Unlearning the Founding Myth by Mark David Hall. Now I can't scroll. Hold on. Stop it. Andrew Seidel, an attorney with the Freedom From Religion Foundation, is an atheist and an angry one at that. His recent book, The Founding Myth, Why Christian Nationalism is Un-American, in his own words, not a work of academic history, but an argument, an attack. Specifically, it is an attack on Christian nationalism. In case you're wondering what Christian nationalism is, it's a person who lives in a nation and is also a Christian. Weird. There is nothing wrong with attacking something that needs to be attacked, but if an author hopes to convince the unconvinced, he or she needs to use evidence fairly, make persuasive arguments, and perhaps even do these things in a winsome manner. Seidel's book will make no converts. Diego says he claims he worked hard for eight years to write that book and did lots of research to quite debunk the myth that America is a Christian nation. Well, he did did not do very well if he if that's the case, because he uses references that in the reference he uses calls America a Christian nation. He just leaves that part out. That's not research that's selective reading apparently believing that ridicule is a persuasive rhetorical strategy Seidel offers a steady stream of it throughout his work two examples will suffice to make this point in a discussion of the Torah he likens the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob to a chest-slapping gorilla who issues the first commandment because he is insecure. Turning the Gospels, turning to the Gospels, he suggests that the whole of Christianity, all right, I clicked it, why isn't it moving? If I click it again and it moves twice, that's going to piss me off.
The whole of Christianity may be predicated on Mary's adultery. Stop right there. Great Sky says, Oprah Winfrey smash or pass? Pass. He is one of those German narcissists. I don't know if he is or not. Diego says, it's the book I told you was burnt by the conservative minister who sent the book here in Tennessee. Well, I'm not going to be reading it because he already made a mistake. He called Mary an adulterer. Mary had very little to do with what happened to her. In fact, she didn't even know it was going to happen. God spread his skirt over her, meaning he impregnated her as a god, meaning he never physically touched her. She just became pregnant. It's a thing called parthenogenesis. You can look it up. Medically, it is possible. Not very likely, but it is possible. Dogs do it all the time. I can't talk to socialists. They just use circular logic. Definitions often include the words they are defining, making the word mean nothing. Amen, brother. One does not need to be a person of faith to be put off by such depictions. Amen. It is puzzling that a self-described forward-thinking press like Sterling would publish them. Well, you don't have to attack the press for putting the words out, but it is startling that a man that calls himself a forward thinker would write such words. Misusing sources. Even an attack piece should treat primary source documents in a responsible fashion. In case you don't know what primary source documents are, there are three types of documents used in a court of law, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary being written by an eyewitness. Secondary being word of mouth and someone writing it down. Tertiary being a record kept in a um, bookkeeping type scenario by a third party. First documents are what we base the Bible on. All of the texts that we use are first documents for the King James Version, the one that I teach from. <laughs> there are Bibles out there that use other source materials, such as the Gutenberg and the NIV. They are not good translations, though. They're not trustworthy. Seidel seems to agree promising early on that if no original source code could be no original source could be found the point cannot be found in this book so far so good a few pages later though he begins a chapter with a quotation from washington's 1783 circular letter to the states the foundation of our empire was not laid in the gloomy age of ignorance and superstition but at an epoch when the rights of mankind were better understood and more clearly defined than any former period. Well, that's only part of it. You should have read the whole thing, buddy. Seidel seems to think that this quote supports his claim that Washington was a man of little or no religion, who, had he been religious, would have prevented showy religious displays more broadly his avers that a founder's thoughts. Religious beliefs were personal, but not for public display or political benefit. Just a few lines after that passage, quoted by Seidel, Washington wrote that progress. My web page is moving extremely slow, so I have to wait for it to move. Washington wrote that progress in America was due above all. There it went, went too far. You moved it too far. You moved it too far. Move his arms. 
Well, I get Hang on. Come on. There. This is excruciating. Man, it really went too far. There, stop. Just a few lines after the passage quoted by Seidel, Washington wrote that progress in America was due, above all, to the pure and benign light of revelation. He concluded his letter with the following words, I now make it my earnest prayer that God would have you and the state over which you preside in his holy protection, that he would incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordinate and obedience to the government, to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another, for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, and particularly for brethren who have served in the field, that's the armed forces, and finally, that he, meaning God, would most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with charity, that's love, humility, and pacific temper of mind which were the characteristics of a divine author, that's Jesus Christ, of our blessed religion, and without an humble limitation, without an humble imitation of whose example in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation. That's the complete quote of what George Washington said. Pro-life tip. Don't open the pool chemicals near your face. Great one, great guy. I feel like I snorted all the pools. Mmm, yummy. This prayer, which includes the paraphrase of Micah 6 8 in bold, and an admonition to imitate the characteristics of Jesus Christ, quote-unquote, the divine author of our religion, hardly seems like the work of someone seeking to privatize religion. There are reasons why one might discount these words, but Seidel doesn't offer them, as he won't, as he is want. I don't, that, that, that's written wrong, as he is want. He simply ignores evidence that does not fit his narrative. You'll see this all throughout the left and all throughout the mainstream media and all throughout the activists of the world. They always, and also all throughout a lot of religious people's programs also, they only pick the narrative that fits what their argument is. They don't see both sides of it. That's what separates my teaching from their teaching is I look at all sides of a thing. I don't just look at what I want to see. I don't go looking for the evidence that I've already made up my mind is there. I look for the evidence and then let that lead me where I want to go or where I should go. These people forget the deist movement of many founders. Yes, that's true. Seidel later quotes approvingly Edmund Burke's 1775 speech in Parliament, that's overseas, where he observes that a love of freedom is the predominant feature which marks and distinguishes the character of Americans. Seidel does not address Burke's observation in the same speech that... Now, these are uh, Burke's words. Religion 
always a principle of energy, and this new people is no way worn out or impaired, and their mode of professing it is also one main cause of this free spirit. The people are Protestants, and of that kind which is most adverse to all implicit submission of mind and opinion. Amen. I don't like to submit to anybody. This is a persuasion not only favorable to liberty, but built upon it. All Protest Protestantism, all Protestants, I can't say that word with loose teeth apparently. <laughs> all Protestantism, even the most cold and passive, is sort of dissonant. But the religious, but the religion most prevalent in our northern colonies is a refinement of the principle of resistance. It is a dis, it is the dissonance of dissonant. That's a music speak. It means it doesn't make a lot of sense. It clashes. Dissonant chords clash. And the Protestantism of the Protestant religion. Hmm. I could give many additional examples of selective quotations or talking quotations or taking quotations out of context, but the book's outright errors present even more difficulties. Misstatements of fact. This is where he starts saying things that aren't true on purpose. Let me see if I can move this along without going too far. <clears throat> Founding myth is littered with historical inaccuracies. Every writer slips occasionally, but the large number of errors in this work call into question the author's commitment to provide an accurate account of the founding era. This is particularly significant for a constitutional attorney who believes history is, at least upon occasion, relevant for interpreting the First Amendment. That's the freedom of speech. The cult of wokeness, Great Sky Troll says. Loose teeth sink. What's the... Uh, that's not right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Seidel's historical errors sometimes cut against his own argument. For instance, he asserts that every colony had an established church. By most counts, only nine of the original 13 colonies had establishments. Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware did not. Some separate... Some se some separatists, some separationists point to these colonies, especially Rhode Island, as being ahead of their time with respect to church versus state relations. Seidel offers no explanation as to why he considers them to have establishments. Go get your head right, great sky troll. Pay attention, though. I'm being serious here. Separationists are often interested in debates over religious establishments in only one state, Virginia. Seidel focuses on these as well, especially on the general assessment bill supported by Patrick Henry that would have provided state support to ministers from different denominations. The bill did not say how much support would be given, but Seidel refers to it as Henry's proposed three-penny tax. All right, where'd you go? He presumably con he is presumably conflating the proposable 
proposal with Parliament's Tea Act of 1773, which included a three-penny tax on tea, to which Madison refers in his memorial as remonstrance. 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 I don't know what that word is. I don't care. Madison's memorial had some influence in Virginia, but not as much as an evangelical petition that received three times as many signatures, but whatever impact it had did not convince the people of Virginia to vote against the bill giving financial support to Christian ministers, as Seidel asserts. In December of 1784, the Virginia legislator postponed action on the general assessment bill until the fall of 1785, but a final vote was never taken on it. Instead, the legislature passed Jefferson's famous bill of establishing religious freedom. But it did so on 1786, not 1785, as Sedell claims. Got to go back up. Whoa. Turning to the New Republic, Seidel dismisses the Northwest Ordinance, which states the common view that religion, mortality, and knowledge being necessary to good government, schools and the means of education shall forever be encouraged because it was passed by the Confederation Congress while the leading founding fathers were at the Constitutional Convention. The law was indeed passed by the Confederational Congress in 1787, but Seidel is apparently unaware that one of Congress's first acts in 1789 was to reauthorize the law, one of the most important pieces of legislation ever passed. April, I just got the gators. Sorry, I was gone for a while. I was talking to my dad. What do you think about the article so far, Kevin? As a final example, and many more could be given, Congress did not give President Washington an official command to issue his first Thanksgiving Day proclamation. It, quote, requested that he do so. Indeed, the initial suggestion was made by Representative Elias Boudinot. Later, President of the American Bible Society The day after the House approved the final language for the Establishment Clause, the House agreed with Boudinot, the Senate agreed with the House, and President Washington complied with Congress's request. Not surprisingly, Seidel does not... Gotta wait for it to move. Surprisingly, Seidel does not quote Washington's theologically rich proclamation, but you can read it here, and it leaves a link. Unsubstantiated Claims In light of Seidel's promise that if no original source could be found, the point cannot be found in this book, I was going forward to see how he would support his claim that we know that both Barack Spinoza and John Locke profoundly influenced the founders' thinking. I've argued elsewhere that Locke's influence in the era is overrated, but I'll concede that many conf- that many founders were familiar with his works. But Spinoza, Seidel provides literally no evidence to support his claim. I suspect that Seidel thinks Spinoza influenced 
the founders because of Matthew Stewart's assertion in his book, Nature's God, that Spinoza was principal architect of the radical political philosophy that achieves the ultimate expression in American Republic, in the American Republic. Seidel doesn't cite the book to support his claim. But he references it elsewhere in Stewart's endorsement and Stewart endorsement, excuse me, and Stewart endorsed the founding myth. So he referenced it elsewhere and the guy that wrote it endorsed his book. But even Stewart concedes that there was and is no meaningful evidence at all in revolutionary America of Spinoza's influence. Stuart at least offers an argument that Spinoza's influence came through Locke, but his reasoning is not very convincing. The United States versus the Bible. In parts... Two and three of his work, Seidel offers a long, tedious, and ultimately unconvincing series of arguments purporting to demonstrate that the Bible had little influence on the founders. There are here are two examples. The governments the Bible exposes and those it has bred are theoretical monarchies. Huh. Let me reread that. The governments the Bible espouses and those it has bred are theoretical monarchies. America's founders did not create a theoretical monarchy. Therefore, the Bible did not influence the founders' views of the government. Okay. First of all, the Bible does espouse monarchies because the first forms of government were kingship. However, when Moses set up his system of governance, that's exactly what it was. It was a congress. He had, and it even talks about it in numbers, he had judges over thousands, judges over hundreds, and judges over fifties, and judges over tens. You understand? He set up a hierarchy of authority. One that we still use to this very day, spliced in with a little Roman influence. So yes, it also espouses a uh, republic. So both of them are wrong on this count. Or this. Let's see if he gets into that. The second commandment prohibits images of anything in heaven, on earth, or in the water that covers most of the known world. In short, it ends art. Wrong. The second commandment says, Thou shalt have no graven images before me. Doesn't say anything about water, heaven, or earth, or art, for that matter. A graven image is a carved statue that you worship. <clears throat> that includes the crucifix, by the way. But it has nothing to do with art. You're wrong on that. Number two, America's founders did not ban art, and in fact, the First Amendment protects any form of expression. That is true. Number three, therefore the founders rejected the Bible's approach to art in favor of liberty. Not true. So one and three of those examples are incorrect. I'm sorry, the Bible does not say that. And the Bible talks about art. It talks about music. It talks about creation. God's very creation itself is artistic by its very nature. Any fool can see what God was talking about in the second commandment. It 
idiots. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is part of the first commandment. I have to go back and read it and see how it separates, but I'm pretty sure that after God says, there'll be no gods before me, I guess number two would be no graven images. Yeah, I guess he's right about that, but uh, it's not talking about art. One does not need to be an expert on the Bible to recognize that Seidel offers interpretations of biblical passages that virtually no one has adhered to for centuries, and it is questionable if anyone ever adhered to some of them. Well, that's a fact. Christian nation versus Christian founding. The founding myth is a problematic book, but Seidel is correct about one important point. Some of the popular authors he criticizes contend that America was founded as a Christian nation. Such a claim implies that America was founded for Christians and that while non-Christians may be tolerated, they can never be fully at home here. America, America's founders disagreed. That is correct. This nation was founded on religious principles and edicts, but it was a nation for all people and all faiths and was allowing for anyone to come in and be part of this new experiment. No matter who you believed in, no matter what you believed in, or didn't. But it always intended to be ran in a Christian manner. That's where we get hospitals from. That's where we get government from. That's where we get raising your right hand in court from. All of these things are Christian edicts, or Christian principles, Christian ideals. Article 6 bans religious tests for federal offices. And the founders understood that this meant that Jews, Muslims, and even angry atheists might be elected or appointed to them. There were few non-Christians in the late 18th century America, but there were some, and the founders were convinced that the right of these gotta let it move citizens that the right of these citizens to believe and act according to the di dictates of consciences of consciousness of conscience must be protected Consider, for instance, George Washington's 1790 letter to the Hebrew congregation in Newport, Rhode Island. I'm pleased to report that both Seidel and I like this letter, although he thinks Turo Synagogue is in Connecticut. <laughs> Washington wrote to this tiny religious minority that. All possess a like liberty of conscience and immunities of citizenship. It is now no more the tolerant is spoken of. It, it is now no more that toleration is spoken of as if it was by indulgence of one class of people that another enjoyed the exercise of their inherent natural rights for happily the government of the United States, which gives to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance, requires only that they who live under its protection should demean themselves as good citizens, in giving it on all occasions their effectual support. May the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the good will of the other inhabitants, while everyone shall sit in safety under his own vine and fig tree. And there shall be none to make him afraid. May the Father of all mercies scatter light and not darkness in our paths. 
and make us all in our several vocations useful here. And in his own due time and way, everlastingly happy. Amen. That's a beautiful statement by our original president or 16th president, depending on who you listen to. This letter from the ear of one's... What just happened? This letter from the ear... From the era's one indispensable man reflects well the founders, understanding that the religious convictions of all citizens must be respected, yet it also illustrates the reality that they did not think that religion must be driven from the public square. The last paragraph contains eight allusions to biblical passages, including Washington's favorite verse, Micah 4.4 which he paraphrased in his own writings at least 40 times. America's founders embraced the freedom of religion, not the freedom from religion. Seidel is certainly free to argue for a non, uh, for a religion-free public square, but he should not distort America's history to support his preferences. And that is Mark David Hall's article. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a little glimpse of reality from the black pages. Now, what have you guys been talking about? My dad is 90, Diego. Wow. 90 years old. Wow, the Lord has given him a long life. Yes, he has. Yes, he was married to my mom for 66 years. Damn, that's a long time to pick up somebody's drawers. Sports update. Lightning beat Carolina on Tuesday. Lightning up two games to zero. Go Bolts. Boom goes the dynamite, says Great Sky Troll. Sharon wants to know where April is at. Hey, Sharon, mind your business. Who's Sharon? Hey, Jake, I am having a dirty martini on ice tonight. Not bourbon. Well, that's amazing. I just had a little infarction. Did you see that? You read an article now. Yes, I have. And I saw it before. I agree with everything the article states. But I promised you I'd read it, and now I've read it. And that was interesting. And I did like reading about the things that Washington said again. It's been a long time. He was quite the eloquent writer. The bartender at Gators. Everyone knows Sharon. Come on, man. You should take a picture of her cleavage and send it to me. Did I say cleavage? I meant face. Come on, man. If anybody listened to it, you have learned the truth. And now you will not buy that attorney's piece of baloney. Nobody was in danger of buying that book in the first place. But, amen. Nobody here would even look at that book. It wouldn't even use it as a thing to prop up my table. Big, beautiful, round face. Blue eyes. Oh, that's Sharon. Oh, why didn't you say so? Yes, yes. I'll buy that book when hell freezes over. Who joins me in the... Hip the boycotting of his baloney. I'm a little old to be boycotting things, but I won't buy it either, I promise. 
he's an Orthodox Christian. By that you mean of the Jewish persuasion? Because as far as Christians go, I'm about as far as from Orthodox as you can get. I will, Diego, support you in your uh, boycott. However, I like bologna sandwiches. He is an attorney like you, Kevin. <laughs> What ain't no country I ever heard of? Not gonna buy his book, Diego, I promise. I wouldn't have given his book this much credence except you wanted me to read the article that refuted it. As your lawyer, I advise ham sandwiches. Sandwiches. Who is Sam Mitch? And what's he doing in this story? Let me just tell you, you know those uh, mowers and the motorcycle that the dude gave me the other day that neither one of them ran about a week ago? Jake don't like my spelling. <laughs> Jake's a bit of a grammar Nazi. Anyway, I cut my grass with my new Husqvarna last night, yesterday. It was nice. I got it running yesterday. Then fish tacos. E. Maybe I could invite invent spiked baloney. That better troll? Woof. The book did make a lot of converts, though. That sucks. Ninety seven percent of the people who read his baloney have loved it. Either way. They are ignorant or want someone to feed their desire for a godless America. Hmm. Ew. They are either angry atheists like him or they are gullible. 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 That's a you. Apparently Biden must have read it. Well, one thing I can tell you about statistics is that they're largely inflated by the people who are selling books. That 97% of nobody has read that book, I promise. There may be a few hundred people have read it. 97% of three is one and point something. Know what I mean? Let me just tell you, Anytime you see statistics, I mean, rotten, rotten, what's, what's that website? Rotten eggs? No, rotten tomatoes. Still says that Star Trek Discovery was a smash hit. Yet they're struggling to find a way to pay for it. They inflated all the numbers. That's why it was a hit. That's because they are literally being spoon-fed this soft-headed, smooth brain drivel. Amen, great sky troll. You tell them like it is. 60% of the time, it works every time. That's right. Maybe people bought it out of curiosity. Maybe it was a success when it comes to sales. Well... There's a lot of atheists in the world. If all of them bought that book, 
it would be a success. That doesn't mean that he's changed any hearts and minds, and that doesn't mean that he's hurt the Christian right any at all. Because <clears throat> I'm still a Christian. You're still a Christian. Didn't hurt me. I bet you there's thousands of people just like me it didn't hurt. Maybe it was bought by libraries. That's a good thought. Maybe it was bought by CNN, put in their bathroom. You know why CNN's still the number one network? Because they have a contract with uh, airlines, and they're played in all the lobbies. That's the only reason. If it wasn't for that, nobody would be watching it. That's 43 million copies. Amen. I like Spock. Beam me up, troll. <laughs> I like Spock too, but I like Kirk better. <laughs> Because they don't report other networks. Yeah, Fox News has them beat, and Joe Rogan has them folding over their sides. <laughs> they don't know what to do about that guy. They've done everything they could to make that guy go away, and he just ain't going away. And he don't belong to anybody, and they hate it. OMG, Kevin, drink another one. You are an Al Kaloic. But when it comes to reading it, they probably didn't convince most of the people who read it who had common sense. And they probably stopped reading it and used it instead for stabilizing a table or a seat. Amen. Damn, Kev. I'm a roustabout. Not a technical engineer. That must be a Bones reference. Because he likes Spock and I like Kirk. Bones. Nailed it. I don't put any stock in any of it. I think it's all horse hockey. Manure. Dr. McCoy. I would take offense, but instead I'll drink another. No cocaine, though. Nope, that was me last week. Oh. Hey, I did not tell you to turn on. I've got to get rid of this damn thing. It is doing its own thing. Wonder how long that's been on. I haven't been paying attention. Andrew Seidel, you have been debunked. Ha 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 ha. Did you know if you put cocaine on a mirror? Yes. Naked women just appear? Yes. I did know that. It's not quite that simple, but somewhere in the pro proximity of reality, yes. <coughs> I know that if you walk into a bar with a pocket full of cocaine, you'll walk out with all the women. That's too hardcore. Yeah. That's the world I came from. Every day. Every day is a winding road. 
Until you're out of cocaine, that's right. That's when you find out who your friends are. Which you don't have any. Family tradition. One woman is more than enough. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. I wouldn't know, though. I'm on hiatus. Kevin should write a book. What? You don't think I should? I'm just teasing. I'm too lazy to write a book. His book would be much better than the baloney. Probably. Kevin's a pretty smart dude. He likes to hide it, but he is. I'm writing a book, says Great Sky Troll. Yes, yeah, the uh, the weird one you were telling me about. Can't remember now exactly, but... Something about something. And to look at identity from an ironic view. Legion Machine is the working title. That's what it was. I like it. I've started writing several books, but then I realized they've already been written. And then I just give up. Because everything I'm discovering and thinking about the world has already been discovered and thought about by other people. I'm just finding it out for myself. The troll comes through again. I Legion, maybe. I like Legion Machine better. Or Legion Machina. Kevin, if you faced that attorney, you would rip him to shreds. Lord be with you. Well, let's not set up any title fights just yet. I don't think that's Kevin's thing. It might be. The Kenyan convert to Christ from atheism is great news. Yes, it is. Think clone wars, but no war. Just 10,000 clones exposing near space, exploring near space. I really need to get new glasses. Can barely see. Near space? How do you get near space? Are they in the atmosphere? I am ready to get my gloves. I think we ripped him a new one tonight. I don't think there's any coming back from that. All right, are they in space or are they near space? Now you got me bothered. You can't be near space. You're either in, in Earth or in space. The atheist society in Kenya that our new convert belonged to does the same thing as the FFRF does. Okay. Okay, that's in space. That's not near it, that's in it. 
unless they're on another planet, then they're in that planet. No. If you talking in galactic terms, you got space and more space and a whole lot more space. None of it is near. It's all space. <laughs> If you're near space, that means you're at the edge of the atmosphere getting ready to go into space. This concept of inner and outer space only applies when you're talking about physical bodies. I have known a lot of women who are on Earth, but truly in space. Amen. You mean airheads. You can say it. I'm going to smoke a joint till he winds down. <laughs> well, it's 10 o'clock, so I might as well go ahead and wind down. Hey, folks. I know you like me paying attention to you. How about pay a little attention to me and hit that subscribe button. Smash that bell icon to get notifications of when I'm going to be here. Leave a like down below. It's free. It's easy. Just hit this. Just smash it. That's all you got to do. Share this video with somebody you love. Hey, share it with somebody you hate. That's even better. It's fun. Leave a comment down below. Question me. Curse me. Bless me. Challenge me. Confound me. Throw me off my game. Throw yourself off your own game. As long as you're thinking, that's what I want. Critical thought coming from your brain. And if you appreciate what I do and the painstaking time that I spend trying to detangle and uh, decrypt all of your thoughts at the speed of lunacy, please take a moment, won't you, and go to paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band. Every little bit helps, and I greatly appreciate it. And happy birthday, Diego, if Great Sky Troll misses it. And always be prepared to DJ, now I lay me down to sleep. That's my theme song. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, DJ, Gotta feed Jake. my best friend, right through it all, DJ. Oh, yeah. If I die before I that's right all right there you go boys and girls it's been an interesting chill wednesday i'm gonna watch some news and pass out and get ready to go to work in the morning it has to do with the various types of fictional faster than light travel methods interesting Just as long as you're in space when you start that faster than light travel. Because if you're near it, you're going to blow up a planet. <laughs> Step plates, subspace, hyperspace. What about my space? Is Tom going to be there? You're in cahoots with Tom, aren't you? I knew this was going somewhere. MySpace failed. Actually, it didn't. It was actually very successful. It got trumped by the CIA. I actually missed MySpace. I thought it was superior to Facebook. Thank you very much, everyone. You're very welcome, and thank you for bringing that to our attention, and we'll do one again later. Keep your eyes peeled and keep your brains open, but not so open-minded that it falls out. I love you guys. Take care of each other and yourselves. I'm turning topside. Have a good night. I love you. Peace out. Bye -bye -bye.